Yep, from Ghent. Belgium, from Ghent. So, uh, Ghent. you've been trying to kickstart the Belgian uh, open street mapping community recently, getting some uh, yeah. meetup groups going. Yeah. How's, that, how's we, that going? We noticed there are a lot of mappers mapping individually. There's no real community or cohesion in Belgium, so we started to organize meetups first in Ghent. And now, uh, next month, we are starting in Antwerp too. Um, and last time, I think, each time our our attendance almost doubles, so I don't think that will stay. That will, will it will keep evolving like that, of course. But for now, it's going really well. We just have to do more meetups more often. So I'm here with Henk Hoff, uh, conference organizer extraordinaire. Been dashing around as ever, always so full of energy at stage of the map. How are you finding it? Uh, it's always energizing. Uh, state of the maps are uh, uh, well. I, I, I find them great. It's uh, it's um, it's what you see, what state of or, or what OpenStreetMap is, what the community is, uh, and there's so much energy there. And although it's sometimes very um, um, uh, frustrating or very tiring to actually organize it, but if you're here at the, at the conference itself, it's just so much energy uh, around it, which makes uh, every time again, OpenStreetMap, that brilliant of a project that you have, that uh, dedicated community doing all kinds of magnificent stuff. I'm certainly enjoying it myself. Okay, well, great to hear. <laughs> Are you Absolutely. doing another auction at the end of the day? Uh, on, uh, probably, Sunday? probably not. No uh, auction. No auction. No, no. Well, something a bit different, maybe. Uh, yeah. Well, the auction idea, the idea behind the auction, it, it started in Amsterdam, 2009, I guess. And the auction, uh, for those who don't really know it, um, uh, it was more of uh, at the end of the, of the Amsterdam conference. Well, we had all kinds of stuff, uh, like banners and stuff and to get rid of. St stuff, stuff to get. Rid of. We 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 others, uh, we otherwise would would basically throw it away. So we kind of thought, well, we can also sell it off, and if and if we can get a little bit of money out of it, it's just a little bit of money for the foundation or for the uh, project. And it's somehow... It turned into the highlight of the conference. Yes. All, all got a bit over right. the top, didn't it? And, uh, it got yeah, a bit carried away with the auctions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we basically, this year, said, well, the fun or the new kind of thing is, uh, has, gr uh, has grown out a little bit and we need to find something new. Something new. Yeah. All right. So see, uh, we'll have to see what happens on Sunday, then. Um, okay. So I have here with me uh, John Fierbao from uh, Mapbox. Um, and you've been doing a lot of work on the OpenStreetMap website, um, so that's a lot of Ruby on Rails coding, isn't it? Maybe you could uh, introduce a little bit how the website's put together with OpenStreetMap. Mm -hmm. So it's built with a framework called Rails, uh, which is software for building web applications in, in a language called Ruby. So it's a pretty popular framework, and that's what implements the whole UI that you see when you go to OpenStreetMap.org. Um, and it allows for browsing the map and uh, the API that the editors like ID and JOSM are built on. So the API and the website are all Ruby on Rails, aren't they? Um, and it's the view of the map on the front page. Well, that's kind of uh, JavaScript and tiles and all sorts of other things coming in. But then you've got right. the diary entries and the user accounts and, uh, and the tracking of the edits and the kind of wiki style history visualization is all Ruby on Rails. Right. Is that the kind of thing you've been uh, looking at improving lately? Yeah, so the, the two areas that I work on uh, at Mapbox and for OpenStreetMap are the editor ID and the design and feature set of the website uh, is something that I've been focusing a lot on lately. And uh, one of my colleagues, Salmon, gave a talk at State of the Map US in June uh, presenting a vision for the website. And uh, he and I have been working together to implement parts of that vision. So I'll be talking here at State of the Map, the international conference, uh, giving a follow-up to that vision and talking about what we've accomplished so far and where we're going next. So the kind of things that uh, everyday users of OpenStreetMap will see on the website, obviously the, the rollout of ID was a big moment. Um, and it's, it's now the default editor, so click edit on the map and you get launched into this new, brand new editor with the 
I love the, I love the uh, user friendly walkthrough feature that it has as well to, uh, to really introduce new users to OpenStream Hub and show them how to edit. Right. Um, one, of the, one of the goals of our work has really been to improve the onboarding experience for new users, uh, make it a kinder, gentler uh, learning curve. It's very impressive stuff. I think it's, I think it's uh, working well. Hopefully, we'll see more new users having a having a gentler introduction to OpenStreetMap. Let's get more on action. All right, I'm here with uh, Chris Fleming yep. from, uh, from Scotland. Yeah, up in well, Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yeah. I live in Edinburgh. Yeah, so I don't sound Scottish, but um, that's where I live. I've been there. For over 10 years now, so good one. And a key organiser of the OSM Scotland meetups. Yes, uh, yes. Looks like it's going really well. It's going really well. We kind of originally, I think, inspired by what was going on in London, we thought it'd be really good to have a, a regular get together in Scotland, um, get people in the pub, just chat about maps and mapping. And the way we set it up was rather than basically central wealth of Scotland is quite compact, so you can get it around it. So we kind of one month we do Edinburgh, the next month we do Glasgow, and then Stirling. So we have we kind of ro rotate around the three cities. Yeah, that rotating program is quite Program, yeah. So and we kind of, every three months in one place. So it has a disadvantage, you do have to remind people to come along because it's not quite regular enough that you kind of, it's easy to forget where it is that month. But there's a good number of people that travel to all of them and you get different locals at each one, so it's great, yeah. It's quite interesting to compare it to the London meetups. We're doing those every two weeks. weeks yeah. But we get along all the, uh, the, the sys admins come along and it gets very technical with some of the discussions in the yeah. London meetups. Apparently the Scotland ones are much more mapping oriented. Which, uh, yeah, no. We try to be mapping oriented in London. Well. It's too easy. Yeah, no, it's really great. And you get people along and it's actually quite nice. You'll get someone along and they'll just have heard about it and have started. And actually, one of the guys came along kind of three months later with printouts and stuff he'd mapped and he was talking about what he'd been doing. And it's just really great to see new people coming along, get excited by the project and then actually mapping their local areas and filling in those gaps. And then moving from streets to buildings to post offices to yeah, that's what it's all about. maybe even trees. That's what it's all about, yeah. So I have here Ivan Sanchez. Yeah. The, the big man of, uh, of mapping in Spain. Yeah, I have been working in Spain since 2006, something like that. Uh, but I will be stepping down from that role because uh, we are going to have the cadastre involved. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope this year, the tool has been in development for two years now for importing all buildings from all municipalities in Spain. And we're hoping to just uh, make a lot of buildings with full addresses and building sheets. So that's Spain. a pretty major government data set being Yes, yes it is. And uh, yeah, we're really grateful because the Castro office has just opened that data for everyone. If you just modify the data, the results of the modification are yours. So that solves all kinds of problems with licensing. It's just perfect. Licensing for That's pretty cool. So, did you were you involved in uh, negotiating that with the? With Not the really. Government? I have been uh, several years uh, attending conferences in Spain regarding uh, mapping agencies, and government data, and open data. Just trying to push the idea of more openness involvement, which I think I have something to do with, with that point of view. But I cannot be sure. And they've decided to. Sounds like they've decided to go for it pretty wholeheartedly, really. And so, uh, the thing is that uh, the Castro office spends money on making the very, very detailed building maps because it's, uh, run, it makes economical sense to do so. If you, in, in Spain, you get uh, land tax, mm. depending on how big your house is or your land mm -hmm. is. So, if the tax office spends money on mapping land uh, properties, they will get that money back. And the point here is, they don't care if you use the data afterwards, because it has fulfilled the purpose. They've got okay. a primary use case in mind. Yeah, the they... primary use case is fulfilled and they got their economic return already. So they don't care if you download it and do whatever you want. That's it. So that's why they have opened it. Interesting. The conference so far. Oh? How are you finding the conference so far? Uh, it's, it's always fun, it's, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's always fun to be here and to meet like, 50 or 100 friends from from past years. That's always wonderful. It's always good to see you, Ivan. Good to see you too. Thank you very much for talking to me. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs>